Uh, we're joined live on the phone with uh, Cameron. So, Cameron, welcome to Radio Nation. It's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me back. All right, Cameron, let's, uh, let's get into the interview here. So you're going to be going off and touring with One Direction uh, very, very shortly. In fact, in, in probably in five, six days, actually. Um, you're going all over Europe, and you'll be eventually going on their Canadian leg as well. Uh, what are your thoughts heading into this tour? I'm honestly, I'm so excited. It's going to be such a great experience, but, you know, mainly I'm actually terrified. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. What is, um, I guess, how do you prep yourself going into, uh, going into a tour like this? It's a lengthy tour, too. So, I mean, what sort of things do you have to do to, to stay mentally oh, focused and mentally, you know, prepared? Um, you know, you kind of just have to look at it like it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of new experiences. It's going to be really hard, and that's kind of just how you mentally prepare yourself. But as far as everything else, you just got to go to rehearsals, vocal lessons, you know, just kind of get your whole body ready for everything that's about to happen. Uh, is there is there a city on this tour on the European leg that you're really looking forward to visiting that you've never been to before? Honestly, the only two places that I've been that we're going to is Paris and London. So, I mean, I'm really excited for everything, and it's going to be crazy. You know, I've never performed over in Europe, so everything's going to be new, and I'm looking forward to everything, nothing really in particular. For some of the people that are listening in right now and um, that don't know all the stops on this tour, uh, do you mind naming a few of the stops on this on this European leg of the tour anyway? Yeah, you know, we're going to Sweden, we're going to Switzerland, we're going to a few stops in Germany, um, we're going to Portugal, and, you know, we're kind of going a little bit everywhere. Um, but, you know, it's, if you want to learn more, go to my website and you can look at every single... Um, that we're doing. You've you've toured with One Direction before, um, and you've performed. You've played with them. Um, what is um, what is one of the the fun things about about performing with a with a band like that that you've actually had the chance and the privilege of watch watching grow really from almost their beginning? Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 crazy, you know, to see to go into it only knowing what I've seen on TV and on YouTube, and then just seeing how they all interact backstage and then on stage, you can just tell they're having a lot of fun. And it's great to learn from that, because if you're not having fun, then what's the point of what you're doing? Exactly. And um, you've, you've, had, you've also had the chance to you know, perform with some other big names as well, including, including Cody Simpson and uh, Grace and Chance. What's it like to, to be at your age and, and uh, being only 13 years old, having performed with some other very, very well-respected and, and heavyweights in the you know, up-and-coming music scene? It's, it's, it's scary, you know, knowing that you're working with a lot of very experienced artists. So you kind of feel a little intimidated. But in, at the end of the day, it's exposure, and it, it is you building your career and just kind of experiencing everything a little bit later than they have so it's it's mainly terrifying but it's fun you know you learn from everything that everybody else does especially who um the main artists are now it's a long tour um that you'll be on with with one direction it's a lengthy lengthy tour indeed and you've also toured in, in southeast asia before um, do you have a certain, you know, I, I, we talked about it, I asked you a little bit earlier, but, you know, do you, how do you, I guess, you know, really just make sure you're not, you're not off your game and, 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 you know, do you, do you have vocal lessons on days off and, and what sort of things go through your preparation when you're not actually performing? Well, um, you know, I, I have a, my vocal coach here in LA, I, I had him make me a warm-up CD, so that way before the shows and before radios, I can, um, you know, actually warm up in the car or in the dressing room, depending on what I'm doing. So that's going to be really, really helpful, knowing that I'll be able to go into the performances ready. And um, just to be around people I enjoy, like my band and my family, they make me a lot more comfortable before I go out on stage, but... Um, you can't really prepare that much as far as nerves, but um, you just got to do your best to prepare your voice and just wish the best happens. 
Now you were in a you were recently in an, in an edition of Pop Star Magazine, which I, I got to see the, the article, which is pretty cool stuff. Um, what's it like? What's that feeling like to to be getting uh, press coverage? You you got some uh, from MTV Canada not too long ago. What's that feeling like to get a lot of press coverage from very very respected media outlets? It's it's crazy. Um, I'm in the magazines that I read. I'm on the TV shows that I watch. It's just mind-blowing to see where I've come, you know, um, but, you know, just watching and just flipping one of my favorite magazines and then just happening to see myself, it's its crazy, it's very surreal, you don't really believe that it's actually happening, so it, it makes me feel really good, it makes me feel like I'm doing something that's right, and I feel really proud of myself. Cameron, you're originally from Denver, Colorado, um, How, for people that are listening to you for the first time tonight, how did you get your start into music? Um, well, I've been singing ever since I could talk, basically, and I recorded a demo when I was eight, and I sent it out to, um, Jeff, who's my manager now, and we were kind of just asking him for a direction on what I should be doing and where I should be sending this demo, because we had already asked him to manage me, and he passed, because, you know, I was eight. <laughs> so, once he heard the demo, he's like, you know what? You don't need to go anywhere else. I'll manage her. And from there, you know, we just started building my fan base and just recording and just kind of showing people who Cameron is. And we've been just slowly building everything over time. What sort of um, you, you, and musical inspirations do you have? You mentioned uh, you mentioned before uh, Beyonce is a big one for you. Is there any other musicians that really inspire you? Yeah, um, not just not just Beyonce, but um, Katy Perry. And actually, recently, fun, fun the band, mainly because I heard what they, they just won a Grammy, and that's a really big deal. And then just to kind of hear their backstory of how they've been touring and trying to make um, it work in this industry for almost for like 10 or more years, and it just, it makes you have a, a higher level of respect, and it makes me feel like there's a, there's a big chance for me to make it as well. So just kind of seeing that they didn't give up, and they just always stuck to what they believe in, and, you know, it really paid off. Cameron, you've got a lot of fans in, in Indonesia, and that's it's probably that's largely due to your 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 touring in in uh, Southeast Asia. What is it What is it like to to know that you have fans all over the globe? Honestly, it, 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 it's <laughs> again you don't really believe it. It's kind of like you're you're in one place, you're in one town, and then to go on the internet and then see how many people from around the entire world. It's kind of like, I've never been to some of these places, so it's crazy to see that people actually pay attention everywhere. So just knowing that alone, it gives me it gives me a lot more confidence to kind of go out and do what I do, because I feel like people are listening, not just in where I'm performing, but you know, they're telling their friends who are telling their friends, and it's kind of just slowly building. Cameron, earlier on in your career, about uh, I would I guess I, I want to say now in 2011, 2010 ish, you did a you you, you did a wide variety of, of Amer North American or I guess I should probably correctly say American school tours where you went and, and, and performed a, at a bunch of schools. How much did that help build your fan base? Um, it, it helped a lot only because we were going to many, many different schools. We're doing a school for every day of the week. So I was performing to thousands of kids every week. So that's great exposure. But not only did it help build my fan base, but it helped me grow as an artist. Performing at schools isn't the easiest thing to do. You know, people aren't there for a concert. They're not there to see you or the headliner. They're just kind of there at school, already not liking what's going on. So just from trying to get everybody active and jumping and acting crazy, I've kind of learned and built my stage presence mainly off that. Now, you've had a lot of practice performing. Now, what is it going to be like for you? What, what do you think that feeling is going to be like when you walk out on the stage at, at O2 Arena or, or, or any one of the other stops on, on your, your European leg, and there are literally, that stadium will be packed full of fans that are, uh, what, what is that feeling going to be like for you? It's, it's the worst feeling in the world 
to be honest, that first moment of going out, just seeing everybody look at you, and until around 30 seconds into the song, you're just, it's pure terror. And I always think right before I go on, what am I doing? Why do I do this to myself? But, you know, once I get going, there's no stopping me, you know? It's like everything kind of takes over. The adrenaline kicks in, and you just kind of have fun with everything. And um, I don't know. It's going to be different. You know, I've never, again, I've never done any shows over there, so it's going to be kind of building new territory. Cameron, if there's a if there's a very big if there's a big challenge for you at this point in your career, what do you what do you think it is? I don't know. Um, I think that the challenge just is kind of going over there and starting to build more of a of a following. You know, I again, you know, I haven't been over there, so and I, I know I know I have a lot of fans out there, but it's just going to be. It's going to be very difficult. You know, I'm an American artist. You know, they haven't really heard of me over there. So I think just winning the crowd over with somebody new is going to be very difficult. But it's going to be a lot of fun. If um, and you mentioned that you know you're going to a new place as well, and you're also be coming to Canada as well. Does your does your mindset adjust a little bit differently? Will it be a little easier to perform in Canada because it is so close to the United States? I don't know. I, I think so, but um, then again, it, it's different territory. Um, but it's. I feel like I feel like because it is so close to the U.S. and all of that. But I, I think that it should be a little bit easier. But you know what? It's all different. Whether it's in a different state, a different town, different continent, it doesn't matter. It's always just as terrifying and just as new. Now you'll be performing with One Direction, and of course they have a they have a huge fan base and and a, and a fan base that you've actually you know had the privilege of watching and growing. Um, does it make it harder because um, their fan base is is very very loyal to One Direction, and and because you are a female artist, and and most of their fans are, are predominantly females, does it make it a little harder for you to to come out on stage and and perform because you are a female? Yeah, I feel like the first initial reaction to me is not the best always, but it's always different. Um, but, you know, it is just girls. We're just girls, and, you know, it's kind of like protecting your territory. You know, they're there to see five boys, so seeing a girl walk out on the stage definitely shocks a lot of people. But um, usually by the end of it, they kind of just have fun with it, and that's really the goal is just to have make and make sure that the audience knows who Cameron is and just has fun. You've hoped, you've you've performed with you know One Direction before. So do you, when you when you go out on stage like that, are you you're showing them Cameron, but are you also saying, hey, you know, you're you recognizing that they are there to see also see One Direction as well? Yeah, um, I don't know. I feel like it it really depends. Um, you know, certain places are tougher to grab than other places, but. Um, you know, a lot of the times, a lot of these girls, this will be some of their first concerts, so um, I can't always take it too personally, especially with the younger ones. They, they don't really know who I am. They've never really been to a concert, so they don't really know what to do. But um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely a mystery every time. What is, um, I guess, what is the one thing you're looking for to most about this, uh, this upcoming tour? I am looking forward to um, visiting all these new um, historical buildings and seeing old paintings and just kind of traveling a little bit more. But um, that's just on my own time. But as far as um, going over there, I'm really looking forward to playing Neo 2 Arena. Yeah, I can see that would be pretty exciting for sure. And uh, you're very, very fortunate because there are there are thousands of artists that would kill to be in your position, and you're only 13 years old. Do you sometimes look at yourself and say, "Holy, like, what is happening? Like, this is this is this is insane." Do you do you get that moment where you just take everything in? Yeah, I do actually. I've had a few of those moments recently, just because only a few months ago I was praying that I would get this tour. And now that I have it, I kind of am in shock still. And I don't, I don't know, I don't think I'll really believe everything is really happening until I get there. 
so it's usually that moment when I walk out on stage to do a sound check that it kind of, it all really hits me, and it's kind of like, whoa, wow, I'm playing in front of 30,000 people as to before I was playing in front of, you know, 20. It's just... The difference is huge, and it kind of makes me realize how far I've come and just kind of, like, take it all in and freak out. Going forward and in, in, in with this tour, what do you think is going to happen once you're all done the tour? I mean, are, are you expecting to, to see a growth in, in your audience? Are you expecting to, you know, is there anything you're sort of expecting to come out of this tour? <clears throat> I mean, you really can't expect anything. You can only really hope. But I definitely want to grow my fan base a little bit more. I want to make sure people, whether I leave, I want to make sure people leave there wondering who I am. I want to make sure that everyone enjoys themselves and just just kind of sees who I am. And then hopefully they'll Google me or figure out who I am, buy merch, you know, just from there just kind of build again like it's like the domino effect once one person finds out who you are then it's kind of like they're going to tell their friends and it just it kind of builds like that now without giving us too much detail because i'm sure you you know there's some sort of confidential where you can't talk about it but i mean are you able to give us a little bit of detail of sort of how one direction came about how it came about that you were added on to the european leg and then the canadian portion of their tour um, well, it all really started with me going on some of their shows um, before in the U.S. And I kind of just, I, I'm not exactly sure how I got on that tour because it was a surprise. No one told me about it until I, I had it. So um, it, it was from there we were kind of like the, the crew and everybody really liked me. And so I was on the list for options of who they were going to have their opening acts as any opening act and headlining artists would have and they just slowly narrowed it down and they one day they were emailing my manager and was just like so you guys we would like how how would you guys feel about coming out on the road with us for europe so of course there was an immediate yes <laughs> and you know we kind of figured out the details and that's how it really came to be was it what was that first reaction like when when they did say hey we'd love to have you come come on tour with us the first time i i <laughs> i couldn't believe anything i was screaming i was in shock and then the second time you know it it i was still in shock it was like i was hearing it all for the first time all over again and you know just it's still, like I said before, it's very not real. I don't believe it. It's just coming so far from a girl who lives in Denver to a girl going on tour with the biggest boy band. So it, it, it's it's crazy. Now, did you did you hear about both portions of the of the tour, like being added to the Canadian portion, or was that sort of something that was done a little bit later on? Yeah, we're 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 like we're in the middle of everything, just kind of figuring out details and just sorting everything out. Fair enough. Now, I guess just, um, you know, without giving too much, I mean, what kind of logistics? I mean, there must be so much that goes on in, in the background. I mean, you got a, all the travel plans and that sort of thing. Do you get a sort of say in, in how that works, or is it really just up to your management to say, hey, we've got it all figured out, don't worry about it, don't stress about it, we've got it all taken care of? I'm usually one to stress out about it <laughs> regardless. So people tend to not tell me a lot of things because I will get, like, anxiety. Like, I had an anxiety attack the other day just from thinking about what I'm going to pack. Like, how do you pack for four months? That's <laughs> crazy. But, um, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't tell me everything. But what they do tell me is usually just very simple. Like, you can have X amount of bags and this is how we're going to get here and you're going to then I just go with the schedule, and that's usually what I do. If I if I look at everything, like in the laid out portion, from the entire month or the entire week, it's kind of very stressful. So you kind of just have to take every day, day by day, or else you'll freak yourself out. Now I saw a picture of what you have packed, and it, I, you posted it on Twitter, or maybe it was your manager that posted it on Twitter, or somebody did, and it's it's like two huge, it's like hockey bag size 
stuff that you're carrying over uh, for for four months. That's ins- mm-hmm. that's insane. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm allowed to bring three bags, and um, one of them is my regular clothes every day, relaxing clothes, and then um, the other really big bag is full of stage stuff. And then I have an entire bag dedicated to shoes because I am a shoe fiend. And I can't live without a bunch of shoes. I'm a girl. What can I say? <laughs> Do you have a favorite brand of shoe? Is there one that you just you absolutely adore? I have a few, um, but I love Steve Madden. I love the combat boots, and then I love Doc Martens. But um, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of different colored Doc Martens that everybody can look forward to. I will definitely be tweeting and Instagramming everything. Now, then you must be really excited to go to Paris because, obviously, it's the fashion capital of the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doing a lot of shopping, I'd assume? I certainly hope so. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to be taking a couple of questions here off of Twitter, and I'm just uh, scrolling through the, wrist, the list right now. Um, this comes from... I'm just trying to get the name here. This comes from Jessica, and uh, she wants to know, what is it like to, to be on stage in front of people? Um, it's, I mean, the answer for anybody would be terrifying, but, um, it's, it's very thrilling. If you, if you like the rush, if you like just adrenaline and all of that, then it's, it's definitely for you. But it's also, it's very intimidating because you're having, you're standing in front of thousands of people and they're all judging you and you know it and you kind of have to throw that aside and just kind of perform. You have to do it for you. And once you realize that you're up there and they're enjoying it and you're having fun, then nothing in the world bothers you. You just go and do what you do best. Has there ever been times on tour where you've you've encountered some kind of difficulty, whether it's maybe not you personally, but something, some logistical thing happens or, or, or something on sound check doesn't work or some engineering thing doesn't happen. And, and, and if so, how did, how did it, how did that happen and how did you overcome it? Oh goodness. So many things can happen. And I think that's the worst part is you just don't know. It's the unexpected. And, um, you kind of just have to prepare yourself for these things to happen. You have to have backups. And if you don't have backup, you have to have a plan of what you're going to do if something goes wrong. Um, so for there, there's, there's something called um, Pro Tools where all of our electric things go through that in order to go through the speakers. So if Pro Tools crashes, you're not going to hear anything. So you always have to have that in the back of your mind, kind of like, okay, if this crashes, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? And there have been a few shows, um, luckily none of the One Direction shows, but um, other times when Pro Tools have stopped and you've had to like restart and it takes five minutes to do that. So if you're in front of 20,000 people, you really can't take those five minutes and you kind of just have to be like, all right, what do I do? And you kind of just have to leave it alone. But um, fingers crossed and knock on wood that none of that happens. Do you ever, do you, is there sort of things you do, do, like do you practice maybe improvising? Okay, if this happens, you know, I'm just going to just you know, do this or just carry on or, or do you really just, there's nothing right. you really do for that? You just kind of have to pray that doesn't happen and when it does, you just improvise. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, if, if we're, because before this tour we were doing everything was plugged in straight to amps and it was kind of that whole setup. So if Pro Tools crashed, it wasn't the end of the world. It was just kind of like an extra. But now, because everything's um, like wireless and electric, you know, my mic, the guitars, the drums, you know, everything goes through that program. So it's kind of like I can't play it off if it crashes. So you kind of just have to leave it alone and just kind of, I don't know, I think exit and just kind of end the show there. In terms of um, your onstage performance and um, getting into, I guess, uh, you know, the wardrobe selection, is that something that you get a large part of a say in, or is that more something that um, tour directors or, or, or management, they say, you know, I, you look better with this, you should do this, or do you get a big say in what you get to wear on stage? I, I have every say. So if I don't like something, then I don't wear it. So it's not like people are telling me you have to wear this, I don't care if you don't like it. It's like, it's me, it's what I'm wearing, it's 
my life. So it's kind of like I get to say this, and if, if, they, if I love it, then I'm going to wear it. But if I don't, then I don't have to. Are there certain things that you try to, you know, avoid wearing maybe only because it's, it's harder to perform in, it, 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 you know, impedes your ability to, to you know, hold the mic and, and sort of things like that? Yeah, I try to avoid jackets as much as possible because you just get so hot. And if you're singing a song that's really constant and there's, like, no breaks, you cannot take that jacket off. So you're just sitting there in buckets of sweat just piling up and, it's, oh, it's awful. I, oh, I, I can imagine that, and and I guess too the other thing I, I guess leading into that is is you don't get really get a chance to to get a water break on stage or anything. So how do you you know how do you I guess keep hydrated when it's there's you're in a stadium of sixty seventy thousand people and it is is scorching hot on stage. Oh yeah, you just gotta go. When you're luckily when you're on stage, you know you're not really thinking about that. You got the adrenaline takes over, so it's kind of like. You know, if, if, if something bad is happening and uh, if you're not having adrenaline rushing through your veins, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. But because it's in the spur of the moment, kind of go for it. So what you really have to do is drink a bunch of water before and a bunch of water after. But because my set's so short and songs are so packed, packed tight that, um, you know, I just don't, I don't get that. I don't get a water break. But there are times where I can have it, but I just choose not to mainly because I forget. <laughs> is there also a, a sort of an, an eating routine? And I guess I, I, I ask that just being sort of a, from an athlete's perspective, you eat four hours before a game or something like that. Is, is that the same thing that goes into to performing? Or do they tell you not to eat so early before a performance? Does that go into the thought process? I mean, kind of. It's, it's, it's more like, luckily for me, um, I don't, I don't, eat a whole lot before I go on because I know that if I overeat, if I overeat then I'm, I'm going to definitely feel it and it's not going to be the best performance. So I have, to, I have to stay away from eating a lot and if I want to eat a lot then I have to eat like a few hours before that way everything like settles in my stomach. So when I'm jumping, nothing tries to come <laughs> back up. But not only that, but you have to stay away from like dairy. Any dairy product is not good for your throat. Do you, um, do they tell you to eat? Is there certain things that, that do help a lot? I mean, like, is there certain things like maybe pasta or stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, to, when you're drinking something, right before I go on, I typically drink a bunch of orange juice and water or tea. But, um, or not orange juice, apple juice. Apple juice is really good. It, throat, it like, coats your throat, so it's everything's good. And um, same with tea. It does the same thing. And water. But um, I love apple juice so much, so I typically go with apple juice. Fair enough. Now, I'm going to uh, just pull in a couple more questions here off of Twitter for you. This one comes from Vanessa in Washington, and she wants to know what your favorite cartoon character of all time is. Oh, goodness. Um, I should think. A good one. Favorite cartoon character. I would have to say Stewie Griffin. Good answer. I like that one. Yeah, that or Eric Cartman from South Park. This question comes from uh, Jess, and she wants to know, what was your favorite stop on your 2012 tour? Mm, my favorite stop? Probably... Mm, that's a good question. I would have to say Connecticut. When I performed at the Mohegan Sun, I had um, performed at that arena a total of three times. So going into the same place, I'd already performed there, so odds are a bunch of people that were there before were going to be there then. So it wasn't as pressuring because I didn't feel like I had to, you know, work as hard to get the audience because most of them had already seen me before. Is there, um, is there one thing that... Um, I mean, because you're you're from your Colorado, um, do you get to, do you get a chance to, to go home often? And, and I guess how supportive have your family been? Um, you know, my family is so supportive of everything I do, and they're so proud of me. But um, I, I don't get to go to Colorado as much as I would like to, but I definitely go out as much as possible, especially on vacation. But even if, it, if it's for, like, three days, then I try and go just because I miss old friends and just the snow and everything about it. Well, you're in sunny L.A., um, what's it like being in in, in L.A., the you know the music capital of of America, with the exception of Nashville? It's got really 
really nice weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. But, um, not only that, it's, it's great. You know, you learn a lot when you're out here, not only about, you know, the industry, but about fashion and just kind of everything on that level. But it's, it's, it's different than what I was used to. Um, you know, you always kind of feel obligated to look a certain way. But so when I go back to Colorado, I see people in sweats, and I'm kind of like, yeah, that would not be okay in L.A. all day, every day. But, um, you know, I love it. It's great. It gives you a chance to, like, kind of dress up and just have fun with everything. Be uh, bold. Do you get to go to the beach quite often? Oh, yeah, the beach. Oh, the beach is amazing. I love the ocean, although it's freezing, but it's still fun, and um, I try and go as much as possible. Do you have a, is, is there a favorite beach that you prefer to go to in, uh, in the L.A. area? Um, I like, uh, well, in the L.A. area, I like Malibu, and a little bit of ways, I like Laguna. Beach. Those are all. I've never been to, to LA, but um, I, I'd love to because it is freezing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a chilly. I I guess I'll ask you this: how how warm is it where you are right now? At the moment, it's pretty cold. It's getting like Colorado cold out here, so it, it hasn't been the best weather recently. But it's it's better than Colorado. Cold as in snow like weather, or just cold as in cold for California type weather. <laughs> Oh no! It's gotten like 30s here. Oh wow! Yeah, that's yeah, what it, that's that, what it is I mean, here. That, it's pretty cold, <laughs> considering. I've heard that there was snow in California, but but I mean, obviously, with the exception of like Tahoe, but I've heard that they they have had snow lately. But I just have been sure where. But they yeah, that's I'm I'm shocked because I was expecting like 70s and 80s. So was I. <laughs> Yep. Fair enough. I'm right. All right, Cameron. I'm going to ask you a couple more quick questions here. Um, you must be extremely busy within the next five days or so. Um, what sort of things do you have planned? Do you get any family time before you get to go off? Um, yeah, I do. You know, recently, especially because this is like my last week of, you know, nothing. I try and hang out with my family. You know, I go to the movies and just kind of be relaxed together, whether that's hanging out in my room and watching TV or just spending quality time together. I think it's really important, especially because I'm going to be gone for so long and just constantly working. Now, um, you mentioned that, you know, you know we talked, we've talked we talked before I and mean, we've had you on before. You are you are schooled as you are as, as on the road and, and, and sort of homeschooled and that sort of thing. Um, do you get, are you going to be doing schooling while you're on this tour? Is that something that will not be happening until you're done touring? No, I'll be doing school during this um, this tour. So, but luckily, you know, it's going to be a lot of field trips because when you're traveling and you get to see things, it's a lot more beneficial than just reading it on a textbook. Yeah, I'm so jealous of you. I wish my schooling could have been like all field trips. That, been all, that sounds like <laughs> so much fun. You get to go and see, like, learn all your history stuff in like England and France and Germany. I'm jealous. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I'm so jealous of you. Now, is, do you have a favorite subject in in school? Well, see, I did until it got really hard <laughs> as I got into high school. But um, I like science. I don't like organic science, but I like, um, you know, the general science. Like a, like astronomy or just, just sort of regular, like you said, regular science? Um, I like chemistry and like dissecting things. Mm. I know, I'm weird. But it's something that I never got to do growing up in in an actual school, so it's something that I know is a part of your childhood, and it's kind of something I've been missing out on, so I, maybe that's why. I was going to... I like doing I like doing experiments, too. I find those fun. That, that, yeah, those are, those are cool. Now, um... I wanted to ask that. I mean, are there things about, because you just mentioned, you know, you get to go on these awesome field trips, and I'm sure you're going to probably go to the Louvre, and, and you get to check out probably maybe some castles or whatever you're doing on in this European leg of your tour. Um, are there things about school that you, regular school that you miss? I do. I miss that um, interaction with people every day. Um, I do go to a sort of school, but there's like 10 kids in the school, so it's like, it's not the same. But, um, and I also miss school dances and things like that. But, you know, in the end, it's, you get a really good education. You get to do things that 
you know, you normally wouldn't get to do going to a regular school. So you got to like, just lose some to win some. Yeah, I mean, there's probably thousands of kids out there that are just as envious and jealous of of you as I am that you get to your field trips consist of traveling all over. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you get to perform in front of thousands of people, which is also really cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, it's it's gonna be good. Um, let's quickly talk about uh, the Canadian portion. I know it's a long ways away, um, but you know you'll be you'll be going across Canada. Is there anywhere in Canada that you've you're curious about, you're like, oh, I've never been here. I've never even, I don't really know much about this place, but I'd like to come visit. <laughs> Is, isn't there, um, I feel like someone told me this, and I, I could be very, very wrong, so correct me, but isn't there this ride where you're, like, over a really tall, like, mountain of some sorts, and you just, like, you, like, slowly drift it out, and then you're on this ride, and you're, like, thousands of feet up or something? something crazy like that well there is canada's wonderland in in uh, it's in the toronto area it's in a place called vaughn and uh, i i haven't been in a long time and that's really the only thing i can think of is there's a ride called behemoth which is crazy huge now i haven't been in a long time and so they might be if the, if it's what i'm thinking of could very well be that that ride that they're talking about um because they're all right they're, all right that would be that's something i want to do i feel like that's crazy and just out there and i feel like that's something I'd be down for. Well, that's in the that's in Toronto. So if you if you are when you are in Toronto, it, which would be which I'm excited for. I I'm probably not gonna be able to get tickets because I'm sure they're already sold out. But it would be so cool to to see you. And if you get free time, you're always welcome to come hang out in the studio because it'd be cool. Yeah, I'm down. And this is the I don't know if you you watched the show Degrassi or ever watched it, but this is actually where the original Degrassi took place. In this, we're on broadcasting. Really? Room. Yep, this is it. <laughs> Awesome. So have you ever watched like the really old ones and you see like the big staircase thing? That that's two feet away from where I'm sitting. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen I haven't seen the older ones, but I've seen I've seen a few episodes of Degrassi. Yep, it's uh the newer ones. Yep, it's uh, it's a it's a Canadian show, and and um, yep, it's uh, it's actually based off of a school in Toronto, um, and I can't believe how long the pro the series has been going on for, but it feels like forever. But um, yep, that's it's it. it was originally was filmed here. This uh, this is a college, but it looks like a high school. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I guess uh, anything else you you want to add to this interview be, before we let you go? I'm just gonna try to see if I can get a couple more questions off Twitter. But anything else you want to add before we let you go? Um, no, I, I think I think you've covered everything. All right, Cameron, I, I want to thank you very much uh, uh, for coming on, and, and do thank your management for me as well, because uh, they've been very, very kind to, uh, you know, give us the chance to get you on before your tour, and I didn't think that was going to happen, but that's, we're very, very lucky to have you on, and you're always welcome back, and, and uh, maybe, if, uh, maybe we can, maybe you can hang out in, in Toronto if you ever get some free time, but I know you're a very busy person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm, thank you for having me, this is great. You're welcome, Cameron, and you're welcome back anytime. And uh, best of luck on your tour. We'll be uh, tweeting about it as much as we can and over the next uh, four months. All right, thank you. All right, take care, Cameron.